everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm updating my paratha slash bust up shot recipe. If you're Guyanese, you probably would call this clap roti. However you call it, it's a really delicious roti. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to make. It's going to be silky, flaky, and so soft and delicious. This is my milk paratha. So we're starting with one cup of water and one cup of whole milk, also known as tea fresh milk. You want to warm that until it's lukewarm. And then to your flour, we're gonna add in baking powder and brown sugar. Give that a mix to incorporate. And then we'll add in that lukewarm milk mixture. You don't want the milk to be very, very hot like when you're making dal puri dough. You want it to just be lukewarm. So add the milk and mix until it starts to form a shaggy dough. Now for my four cups of flour, I used out the entire two cups of milk mixture. Now you're gonna add it a little at a time and not all at once because different brands of flour would absorb that mixture differently. So you wanna knead this really well. I like cleaning my bowl as I go and bring it into a dough ball, add a little bit of dry flour if it's too sticky and continue to knead. Squeeze and turn, squeeze and turn. Add some avocado oil or some butter or some ghee and start pressing this in. You wanna knead it really well. This is another technique that I learned from my mom. Press, 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 and then form it into a dough ball. Once it's nice and smooth, we're gonna cover it with a damp paper towel and then a tea towel. This is gonna rest for 10 minutes. And after it's finished resting, then we'll move on to the second part. So let's make the filling that goes inside of the paratha. You're going to need unsalted butter or, or ghee and vegetable shortening. Now the vegetable shortening, you do need it, but if you want to omit it, feel free to. It gives you a really nice roti. So if you want the results that I've gotten here, please follow the ingredients listed we're going to break this into seven small dough balls you can make these bigger if you like i have a 16 inch tower so i need to make them about three to four inches in diameter once you've made the dough balls we're going to allow them to rest covered again with that damp paper towel and tea towel let them rest for about 10 more minutes you want the gluten to relax now we're going to take the dough ball and we're going to flour our work surface and roll this out to about eight inches in diameter you don't need to open it out very very big now once you open it out you're going to take some of that butter mixture and spread a thin layer on the top of it spread it evenly and then take a little bit of dry flour and dust it over. This is just something I learned from my mom. This is how we grew up making it. Make a cut from the middle outwards and start rolling that dough into a cone, taking the flap and tucking it into the top and then pressing that piece inside and pressing down to form one layer. So you're gonna continue making all of your layers Cover again with a damp paper towel and a tea towel and allow this now to rest for minimum five hours. I let mine rest for six hours in total, but after five hours, this is how it would look. So you go ahead and remove it and let's start rolling it out. Now, if you wanted to leave it longer than five hours, of course you can. If you wanted to leave these overnight to rest, of course you can. You can leave them on your counter or in your refrigerator. I always like pressing thinner on the ends to make sure that the ends of the roti is not thick. It's nice and thin. So roll it out nice and thin and always press more on the ends so you have a really nice thin roti on the ends. Use as much dry flour as you like and then to a lightly greased towel on medium heat you're going to cook this for 20 seconds on one side. And I brought this tower over from Trinidad. So if you ever travel to Trinidad, be sure to bring back one with you. Lightly oil. Remember it does have butter and shortening in there. So you don't want to overput too much of 
oil just lightly oil turn it over and oil the other side now this cooks up really quick you can see how thin the roti is you just want to make sure that the ends cook properly I like to fold it in half to make sure that happens and then using another dabbler we're going to bring it together and start hitting it lightly just to let those layers come apart and form if you're a Guyanese you would do this step by clapping it between the palm of your hands but in Trinidad this is how we learn to do it with both dabblers look how silky and flaky already and when you cook it on a medium low heat you get a really soft paratha if you cook it on high heat you're gonna get a crispy paratha but it's gonna get really stiff on you quickly you want to store this in an airtight container wrapped up really nice so it's nice and warm so it doesn't dry out and get stiff or hard and this is served with curries stews whatever type of sides pumpkin body you name it i hope you guys enjoyed this easy recipe comment down below let me know what you think if you are new to my channel i hope you subscribe hit that like button Leave me a comment, I'd love to hear from you. Bye everyone.